All right, welcome to this tutorial. My name is Dr. Jude Ejepu. In the last tutorial, we looked at uh, reduced to pole transformations and the challenges we have and the various methods that we can uh, use to actually minimize the north-south smearing effects that we have, especially at low magnetic regions. And uh, want to introduce another one, which is the reduced to equator. Now, the most common method to accurately display magnetic data especially in areas of low magnetic declination, is to produce a reduction to the equator of the total magnetic intensity. Now, this reduced to equator algorithm works in the same way as the reduced to pole algorithm, except that some of the terms have their signs reversed and produce a field with horizontal polarization. Therefore, magnetic data collected in low magnetic latitude region will display anomalies striking east-west with incorrect polarity. Unfortunately, the RTE, that is reduced to equator algorithm, enforces smearing of the anomalies in an east-west striking direction rather than correcting for it. So let us take a look at the reduced to equator algorithm and the map it produces, and let's compare and see how that does. Okay, now, so we continue with our step-by-step -step filtering. Remember, in the previous video, we have prepared our grid. We have done the forward fast Fourier transformation. Now it's time to define our filters. And we still use this, our con file. Yes. And now we choose the filter that we are going to choose right now is reduced to magnetic equator. These terms, these values still remain the same. Remember, this uh, survey was flown on this particular date on the 31st of July 2007. We're not going to be applying any amplitude inclination correction. So we just say OK and we go here and um, apply this filter. Now the name of this will be reduced to equator. Every other thing remains the same. So we have this. So while that is working, okay, so we have produced this. So let's take a look at how it uh, compares to the other uh, things that we have here. We click on this and see, oh, we are not having it, but let's compare. Uh, let's take this. Okay, let's leave this. Let's take this off. Let's take this, reduce the equator. Let's take this inverse off and Let's look at this vertically and uh, let's see how that plays out. Okay, so we are seeing the reduced to equator uh, grid here. We are seeing the reduced to pull, the amplitude inclination corrected version of the RTP. And we are looking at the, the normal TMI grid here. We'll see that there is little or no uh, problem with this particular correction. But let's also take a look at um, their values and see how they compare. So we have this, we have this. Okay, no, this is gone. So we replace it with um, this and we remove this and see. So once we point at any value here, so what we're seeing is at the normal uh, TMI grid, we have this minus 8 nano Tesla, the RT is minus 12. And this is 97. So we see that there is no much difference between what we have. Let's look at this broad anomaly here. Okay. Uh, when I say look at the R R TMI is 135, the RTE is 148. So uh, nothing much has been done. So uh, to this particular data, you see that uh, doing RTE in low magnetic uh, latitude areas is actually a better option for us. But I keep insisting, reduced to pole in itself is not bad. We need to work on it and see how that plays out. Remember, if we, some people say, do reduce to equator and then invert the reduce to equator. Now, if we do the inversion and compare to the, uh, the RTP, we'll be getting something like, these values will not change. But let's, let's compare. Let's uh, take this uh, value of, let's add one here. Let's add this grid. Let's add this grid here. Sorry. 
uh, let's add the reduce to equator, reduce to pole, reduce to pole. So let's type vertically and let's see how that plays out. Huh? Okay. So uh, some people are of the opinion you can invert the values of uh, these other ones. Yeah. So reduce to pole. Let's see. Reduce to pull here and let's see check out their point value. So some people argue that you can run reduce to equator and invert the value. So if we invert the values of this RTE, what we are going to be getting here is 98, and the for the RTP is 54. And let's see another another portion here. Uh, the inverted value for the RTE will be minus 8 here, while the RTP is 75. So it doesn't really work well like that. So what, what, what the, the, the conclusion is that we need to look at these things and see which one works best. Now, uh, a more superior argument, although not very, very uh, popular argument, especially when it comes to uh, the, the, the interpretation of some structures, is the use of the analytic signal of the grid. Now, the analytic signal is the sum of the three uh, directional derivative that is derivative along the the z the x and the y the horizontal derivatives x and y and the vertical derivative z so the derivative is x x and y z uh, directions are summed up because of uh, this uh, there is no bias in any direction so it produces anomalies that are independent of a uh, magnetic inclination and therefore it has been proposed that it is good in low magnetic uh, regions, magnetic latitude regions. Now the peaks are interpreted as the edge of the source bodies, that is the derivative. So the main purpose of the AS is to define geological boundaries, not structural per se, because when you use it for structural interpretation, as we will see in subsequent videos, it may not yield the, uh, the, 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 the orientation uh, 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 the way we may want it. And now the second most common method uh, to, to, to reduce this um, uh, magnetic latitude effects is to apply the analytic signal to the TMI. So and that is um, what we are going to be doing now because uh, although structures cannot be accurately located using this method, the strike of the anomalies appear to be obscured in the regional field that has been removed using this particular algorithm. So to do an analytic signal is very easy. All you have to go to do is to go to MagMap and click on the analytical analytic signal here. So like I said, we'll go to MagMap and you click on analytic signal here. So your input grid will be your TMI, that's the original TMI, and what will be the output. So we give the name, the output as Zungeru, analytic signal. Now, what is the D derivative? We we'll need the fast Fourier transformation. We don't need convolution. Retain derivative. We don't need to retain that. So we click on OK. So that runs it and we'll see the outcome. OK, so that is done. And this is the analytic signal. So uh, let us try. Uh, we are getting so much uh, maps here. Let us try and tie vertically. Which one do we remove now? Um, let's leave this RTP, let's leave RTE, let's leave AS, let's take this off. Uh, let us be left with just four of these, tie vertically, and we'll see how that works. Okay, so look at the analytic signal here, and um, look at this. So how do they compare? Would you be able to uh, get the the strike or the alignment uh, as properly as you can? Can you delineate the structures as well as um, uh, using these other derivatives or or using these other reduced to equator uh, maps? So uh, that will be left to you, and especially the kind of work you are doing. So you look at it, maybe do some more research on it and see which one works best for you. So as with every problem, there is no single magical solution that accurately display, displays 
the position of uh, the strike of all the anomalies, especially in this low magnetic region. So the important point to note here is that the range of solution, a range of solutions is required, as well as an interpreter who understands the benefits and the limitations, the limitations of each of these methods. So uh, for me, what I do is that I combine a lot of methods and do some transformations to actually get what I need. This will be shown in the subsequent videos according to the geology of this place that we're working on because we have uh, uh, known the geology very well and we can we have tried a lot of methods and some of these methods actually work in this region. I'm not saying it's going to work in every region, but I'm going to show you what we do and the results that we are getting. Thank you very much for watching again.